This is Canon S120. This is a camera that is 10 years old and I still use. The video camera that I saw Casey Neistat talking about it and I just really love the quality of his videos so I wanted to emulate that by using the same camera. The quality is undeniably good. Canon doesn't even make the S series anymore. They moved on to the G9 and those cameras. So these are quite a rarity. What I love about these cameras, first of all, is the build. This camera is built like a tank. This camera has been through waters, beach, mountains, and everything in between, travels and anything I could throw at it. You can tell the it's very wore out, like a whole part of the camera here is missing, the monitor is busted. Still one of my favorite cameras. Compact cameras are always very special to me. I think there's something quite elegant about them. While most mirrorless cameras are just trying to be the best they can be, and they kind of end up looking very similar to one another, I feel like compact cameras can look very unique, which is why I keep making videos about them because I think they all look so different. And if you want something with more personality, a compact camera will definitely give you something a little more tangible. But let's talk more about this guy. I think when this camera came out, it used to be around 300 pounds, and I still think that to buy a brand new one of these, you have to pay like 250, 260 pounds. So in terms of resolution, this shoots HD. So we're talking about 1080p, uh, up to 60 frames per second, which I quite like it. Usually I just leave it on that settings. It doesn't take too much memory space, which is quite nice, but he double the frame rate gives you that flexibility. A negative point that I found on this camera was the battery. I always felt like the battery used to drain a little bit too fast, especially when you're shooting video. I tried to buy extra batteries for it, but started to become too much work carrying a battery or a charger for a camera that is supposed to be kind of like seamless. So I'll always charge this in the evening and have a full battery for the day and I'll usually try and make it last. You get quite keen when you use it so often that you know what you can do with the battery or how much you can use with it. It's not something that I'll film myself 24 7 but I could definitely get at least 40 to an hour out of this camera. I thought it would be interesting to do a test of this camera and really look through if the camera still holds up after 10 years. See, for me, compact cameras are very important to have certain features. And those features are out of focus, out of exposure, and a good exposure. Because see, you don't want to fiddle with the settings on this camera. You want to turn on this camera, film yourself, and call it a day. Let's have a look at the footage and see how the camera did. I took a couple of photographs as well because the last video that I did about a compact camera, people asked me a little bit about photography and even though it's not something I really focus on, I think it wouldn't be too much to add to the test. Looking at these photos, for example, I really like how well the sky is exposed. If you look at the top leaves over here, they're perfectly exposed because you're being well lit by the sun that you can see is right behind here. Not too sure about the sun itself. If you see how the light is kind of peaking, not too happy about these fragments. Canon has always been really good at having this kind of creamy texture to their image. I feel like they're really good at skin tones. So I feel like this clip I tried to do, I was sitting in front of the, the window light. So there's constant change in the light and the exposure and personally i'm very happy with this considering the size of the camera considering the image resolution the fact that this fits in my pocket see that fragment kind of hits with the camera as well if you look just surrounding the the light of the sun you're getting these like weird color fragments which is when the white breaks apart the exposure going from the sky to the leaves i think it's quite well it's not it's obviously noticeable because it's a very drastic change you're going from lit by the sun to something backlit so it takes quite a drastic change but i think it looks quite good here for example you can see that there's a bit of grain but see that's where i think these things get very complicated because these are not meant to be perfect cameras there's a reason why like cameras like that one exist if this could do everything you wouldn't be this price point it wouldn't be this small so i think the idea is like what do you want to do with this camera what do you want to try and achieve and how much of it 
this camera can do for you. I think looking at these cameras, I really try and look up like, what does it look like? What does it feel like? How does it react? I love using the zoom when I'm using these cameras. I think the back and forward, it gives that kind of like old camcorder kind of vibes. And I feel like these cameras are perfect for this because they have a little bit of this old feeling to it. They have this kind of interesting, nostalgic vibe to them, They're easy to use. And this idea of, the, the negative that I told you about the batteries, I think they are almost works into its favor where like you want to be a little more intentional. You don't want to like whip this thing all the time. You want to be a little more focused, but you do get enough to use throughout the day. So my camera in particular is very beat up. If you look at this camera, it doesn't look like it should be working. And these images, I literally took it yesterday for this video. This is an interesting task that I tried to do. The light on my kitchen is tungsten and there's no windows. So I tried to walk from the kitchen to the living room. And the goal was to see how well does the exposure change and how well does the temperature change. It's one of those things that I want this camera to do really well is just adapt immediately. Okay, you can see walls are a bit blue. Everything is a bit blue. Oh, oh my God. Ah, okay, that's very interesting. The exposure did quite well. Honestly, no complaints on exposure, but the temperature didn't change for a while. I went blue. This is so fascinating. I never tried this before. The texture, the focus, good. See, by the time I turn back and back again, I think once the camera sees the light of the sun, it adapted a little bit better. Uh, but it's definitely something to be aware of. This is the camera looking directly at the sun. You can see this pigment, I think is definitely something within the camera. This camera fell on water two or three times. So I do think there's something within the lens or something like that. But again, I think these things add to the camera. Personally, I like it. I think it looks cool. I think it has a feeling to it. If it was unusable, if it was like just destroyed image, I wouldn't use it because at the same time, you do want something that you, you can use either on a YouTube video or for a family film. I think this is really fun. I think it looks really good. And in my opinion, it's definitely worth it still after 10 years.